In this video, I'll introduce one of the most important theories in investments, modern portfolio theory. I'll discuss why it's so seminal and what benefits it offers to investment professionals. Then I'll discuss how we determine which portfolios are better than others. And then finally, we'll introduce the efficient frontier using some data. Now, when I say that modern portfolio theory is important in the field of investments, that's kind of underselling it. MPT is a Nobel Prize winning theory and is still viewed as a viable investment strategy decades after it was discovered. The original research paper written by Harry Markowitz was one of the earliest investment papers in the field of finance. As you've probably noticed, investments is a relatively new discipline when we compare it to, say, medicine or law. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that this 1952 paper marked the beginning of modern investments research. The theory behind MPT asks us to estimate expected returns, standard deviations, and correlations between each asset we could possibly invest in. We then adjust the weights of each possible portfolio combination to identify the portfolio combination with the highest sharp ratio. That portfolio is the most efficient portfolio because it has the highest risk-adjusted return. Let's go over the two steps to modern portfolio theory now. There are two steps to modern portfolio theory, security selection and asset allocation. The first step, security selection, involves us estimating expected returns and standard deviation and then finding the ideal weights of each risky security in our portfolio. When people normally think of modern portfolio theory, they're usually thinking of the security selection step. Now, we have many models for estimating expected returns, and we have decent data to complete this step. And this video primarily focuses on this first step, the security selection step. In the second step, the asset allocation step, we estimate the level of risk aversion of the investor and then identify the weight we allocate to our portfolio of risky assets and the weight we allocate to the riskless security. Think of a T-bill. The downside to this second step is that it's very, very hard to estimate someone's personal risk aversion level. So when we talk about modern portfolio theory, this first step is very mechanical, while the second step, there's some empirical issues with it. Now, let's use some data to illustrate the modern portfolio theory. So I just created some fictitious data using the very real iShares MSCI Emerging Markets ETF and the S&P 500 ETF as our two securities. And we also have some fake data on a one-year UST bill. All right, so as you might expect, the emerging markets security or ETF has a higher return and is more volatile than our SPY or our, our spider ETF. And the T bill has the lowest return and no standard deviation because it's essentially risk-free. It's not, it's got no volatility. All right, so the correlation between our two risky securities is 0.6522. And let's say that we decide to equally weight both of these securities in our portfolio, our risky portfolio. In that case, our expected return is going to be 10.5% and our standard deviation is 34.66%. And our sharp ratio is just going to be our expected return on our portfolio minus the risk-free rate divided by the return on the portfolio or 0.2544. Now, the question becomes, is this the highest sharp ratio that we can achieve? In other words, can we adjust our weights to increase the sharp ratio of our portfolio? Well, we'll find out in a second. Now, before we actually determine whether we can improve our sharp ratio of our portfolio that we're gonna use throughout this video, I need to mention the mean variance criterion. And the mean variance criterion essentially says that a single portfolio, let's call it portfolio A, dominates another portfolio, we'll call it portfolio B, 
if the expected return on portfolio A is higher than the return on portfolio B and the volatility or standard deviation of portfolio A is less than the volatility or standard deviation of portfolio B. And when I say dominate, what I mean is we would always want to select portfolio A or hold portfolio A with portfolio A's weights as opposed to the portfolio B weights. Now, let's talk about what happens when we alter the weights of the securities in our portfolio. So I just showed you a few slides ago a case where we equally weighted the two securities in our portfolio, the Emerging Markets ETF and the S&P 500 ETF. Well, this is our mean volatility or mean standard deviation plot. We have our expected returns on our portfolio on the y-axis and our portfolio volatility on the x-axis. And each of these dots represents a different possible portfolio combination. So one of these, probably this one, represents the equally weighted portfolio where we have a return of 10.5% or expected return of 10.5% and a volatility of somewhere between 30 and 40%. Now, if we were to adjust the weights of each of those two securities, we would be able to achieve a different expected return and a different portfolio volatility. So, for example, here's the case where we just invest all of our money in the S&P 500. We would have the S&P 500's return and its volatility. And if we go up here, all the way to the top, this is the case where we invest all of our money and we have a weight of 100% or point or of one in our emerging markets ETF and nothing in the S&P 500 ETF. Now notice that we can achieve every point on this line. I mean, the dots just represent the, well, each 10%, but we can achieve literally any point on this line. So this is a graphical representation of all of the possible portfolio combinations that we can achieve by adjusting our weights. Now, I did mention a bit earlier that in this fictitious example, our correlation coefficient was 0.6522. And that corresponds to uh, this line right here. This is just the line from a few seconds ago. However, if we adjust our correlation coefficient between our two risky securities, what you see is exactly what's illustrated here. We're going to see a change in the line that represents the expected returns and portfolio volatility that we that our portfolio will consist of. So if we, let's say, increase the correlation coefficient from 0.6522 to 1, well, what that means is that we get no benefit from diversification. Essentially, the S&P 500 is just a linear combination of the emerging markets ETF. If we were to decrease the correlation coefficient between these two securities, what you can start to see is that this line gets bowed out more and more. In other words, let's say we, we focus on this point, the point where we have about a 10% return. Well, with perfect correlation, our volatility is going to be about, we'll say, 37%. With our original correlation coefficient, it's like 34%. If we have a 0% cor correlation coefficient, in other words, these two securities are have independent returns are, or are independent from one another, our volatility decreases all the way to about 26%. And then if we go all the way over here to perfectly negatively correlated, what we see is that perfectly negatively correlated securities will allow us to have zero risk. In other words, we're still getting that 10% return, but there's a combination, a portfolio combination out there that will allow us to completely eliminate the risk of our portfolio. In other words, our volatility is zero. 
Now, this red line here is really the holy grail of portfolio management. Our goal is to find a high return with a very low volatility. And if we have perfect negative correlation between two securities, we have essentially a riskless profit. And I mean, I'm, I can't say that ever really happens in the real world. You're always going to have a risk. You're always going to have risk. But if we were to ever find two securities that have perfect negative correlation, we would have something like this, where we can achieve a riskless 10% return. So that's that. This is the benefit, or this is my best way of illustrating the benefits of having or finding securities with very low correlation. It allows you to essentially reduce the risk of the portfolio. Now, as you just saw, the lower the correlation between the two securities, the greater the diversification benefit. Now, there is another point I want to make, and that is that most people don't just have two stocks or two ETFs in their risky portfolio. As we start to construct portfolios with dozens of securities, the marginal benefit of diversifying into another security decreases. Eventually, the diversification benefit of adding another stock or other security to our portfolio becomes somewhat negligible. All right, now let's extend our example. So all the way a couple of slides ago, I showed you the original curve. And I said, here's where, here's the combination where we invest everything in the SPY or the spider. And here's the portfolio where we invest everything in the emerging mar markets ETF. Now, we can extend this plot by shorting one security and using those assets to buy up the other. So, for example, let's, let's say we were to short the S&P 500 from our broker. Uh, we, we short those assets and we use those assets to buy additional shares of the Emerging Markets ETF. Well, that allows us to achieve extended results. In other words, we can increase our expected return and our volatility and we can achieve every other point on this line at the expense of, you know, having to pay our broker interest. Down here is where we short the Emerging Markets ETF to buy the S&P 500 ETF. And then right here, you'll hear me say this a couple of times, but this this point right here is referred to as our minimum variance portfolio. It's the portfolio combination with the weights that give us the lowest possible standard deviation as well as the lowest possible variance. Uh, this is an important point, and I'll talk about why that is in a second. How about right here? All right, so now we've talked about that blue line, and part of that blue line, specifically the top part of the blue line, everything from the minimum variance portfolio up has a specific name, and it's called the efficient frontier. Now, the efficient frontier is the line that's constructed using the best return for each standard deviation. Now, keep in mind, we've only been working with two securities in this example. However, in the real world, you can build portfolios containing hundreds of stocks or other assets. The efficient frontier represents the minimum risk or volatility of any portfolio for a specific expected return. You can always build a portfolio with a volatility greater than the one on the efficient frontier, but that portfolio wouldn't be efficient. Our goal with the modern portfolio theory is to identify a portfolio that offers us the highest risk-adjusted return, so we want to be somewhere on that efficient frontier. The portfolios to the right of the efficient frontier are not efficient. So here's a graphical representation. So we have our plot from a few seconds ago. The efficient frontier runs from the minimum variance portfolio up on this blue line. These portfolio combinations, these represent all of the other possible portfolio combinations with a specific expected return and volatility, but notice that they're all to the right of our efficient frontier. This means that they're not efficient and we can do better than that. So 
instead of having a portfolio with a re- expected return of 13% and a volatility of 60%, we can find a portfolio that has that same 13% return with a volatility of, let's say, 47% or 46%. So this, that portfolio is better than this portfolio. So in other words, what I'm trying to say here is the best portfolio combination you can have will be somewhere north of this minimum variance portfolio on this blue line. All right, so let's recap. I've just introduced modern portfolio theory to you, and that theory consists of two steps, the security selection step and the asset allocation step. The security selection step is what we covered in this video. The asset allocation step is going to come in the next video. Now, remember that a portfolio dominates another portfolio if its expected return is higher and its volatility is lower than the other portfolio because that allows us to create a, that, that portfolio is going to have a higher sharp ratio than the other portfolio. Also, remember that any two securities whose returns are not perfectly positively correlated with one another can, if they're put into a portfolio together, offer some diversification benefits. So if you remember, I showed you the case where we have a perfect negative correlation and I showed you that we can actually have a riskless return, but you really never see it in the real world. Uh, if you did, the risk-free rate would be the return that you would be earning. Uh, now, the efficient frontier is the last part of this video, and I showed you that that runs from the minimum variance portfolio all the way up on the blue line. And that efficient frontier is really the graphical representation of the best return for each standard deviation above the minimum variance portfolio. It's just the top left of all of our possible portfolio combinations. And so with that, I'm going to wrap up. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.